Glory to God. So, just to remind you, we're, we're eating over at the Activity Center after service, and we'd like to have all of you come. Bless God. Whether you brought any food today or not, there's plenty of food over there, you know. And we have some good fellowship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, in a little bit, in a little while, we'll lay hands on students. I guess anybody involved with the school system or whatever, we'll lay hands on for an impartation. But uh, before we do, I want to I'll share from the Word, build faith. Some things I've seen that I haven't seen in years past. I maybe overlooked it or whatever. But we'll share some things from the Word about that. Glory be to God. You know, uh, David said he was smarter than his teachers. And, uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they were all smarter than their own. Because, uh, you know, because of who they were. Well, if they were smarter under the old covenant, how much more were the students in the new covenant? The new, you know, uh, if Jesus was smart and you joined to him, that smarts in him will be in you. Isn't that right? Glory be to God. Amen. Anyway, before we get, um, I'm going to share something out of the Living Bible. You know, uh, people always try to compare God with somebody else. You know, I mean, you can't compare God. Listen to this out of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. In the uh, Living Bible. Who else has held the ocean? Who else has held the ocean in his hands? Sea law. Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Evidently God did. I was looking at that, Miss Jeanette, and I, I, I wanted to try to visualize it, you know. You can't, how can you visualize it? In his hand, he held the oceans in his hand. Who else? Nobody. You can't compare God. You can't compare God. Listen to this. And measured off the heavens with his ruler. So God has a ruler, and he measured off the heavens. He took his ruler out. Who else? Who else? <laughs> Who else knows? Listen to this. Who else knows the weight of all the earth and weighs the mountains and the hills? Who can, who can advise the Spirit of the Lord or be his teacher or give him counsel. Listen to this. All of Lebanon's forest, Lebanon, uh, they, had, they had a lot of trees. All of Lebanon's forest do not contain sufficient fuel to consume a sacrifice large enough to honor him. And then this, nor all the all its animals enough to offer to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. All the nations are as nothing to him. In his eyes, they are less than nothing, mere emptiness and fraud. Mere emptiness. Huh? Isaiah. 40, what did I say, 40, 12, and 18, 16, 
There's no comparing God. He is too much. He held the oceans in his hand. If he can hold the oceans in his hand without the water running out of his hand, he can take care of you. He can hold you up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, let me give you the title of my message. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes this people in the sound booth have to make up a message. Sometimes I think, where did they get that? And they probably think, where did you get that? <laughs> Hallelujah. From dormant to dominant by faith. From dormant to dominant by faith. Actually, from dormant to dominant by declaring your faith. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, about declaration. But before we do, let me put a little groundwork here because of the students. We'll be laying hands on them. And, you know, this is for everybody, but the emphasis is on the kind of emphasis on the students. And I've, I've min I don't know if I ministered it last year, but I have for a while about being quick, sharp, and smart. And uh, so I, I went back and did some looking up. Did a little looking up on this, and, and uh, I come up with uh, more words. <laughs> but, but that's the... I might mention the words, but we're going to stay with just those. Quick, sharp, and smart. Glory to God. Say it. Quick, sharp, and smart. Say this. I am quick, sharp, and smart in Christ. Yeah, I want to add that to it. Now, whether you do or not, you're not quick and sharp and smart outside of him but in Christ you're quick sharp and smart but you need to declare that to uh, to acknowledge it to be aware of it are you here today so anyway um, Isaiah Chapter 11, verse 1, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding. Notice, in the fear of the Lord. In the Amplified it says, And shall make him of quick understanding, and his delight shall be in the reverence and obedience of the Lord. So shall make quick understanding. Everybody say quick understanding. So God made Jesus of quick understanding. Are you here today? That's what he said. Now, listen to these. The word quick. Now, students get a hold of this. Prompt to understand. Prompt to understand. To think or to perceive. Keen, clever, alert, bright. When you go into the classroom, when you go into the classroom, wherever it is, you're going into the classroom and you're bright, you're alert, and you're prompt to understand. Because you're in Christ. The word sharp, 
means keen in intellect, perception, ability to understand. Ability to understand. Ability to understand. Now, if, if it's been, I don't know, that you've been a slow learner, eliminate those words. In Christ, I have understanding. I was telling Pastor Darlene, I was in uh, Ponca City and minister, went down there to speak at Full Gospel Businessmen and went to church with the, with the pastor with the pastor, with one of the pastors. It's kind of a different church because they had about four pastors. I don't know how they did it. <laughs> but there were, now listen, there were some people there. I think it was two, two, there might have been four. Anyway, I know there were two that were deaf and dumb. But they prayed in tongues. Why? They bypassed the intellect. I don't know how somebody told them to do it, but they spoke in tongues. That's supernatural. You students, you got supernatural capability on the inside of you. You're not going into those classrooms just like students that aren't born again. You're at a disadvantage. Why? You're quick, sharp, and smart, intelligent, able to comprehend. I, I, man, when I went to school, I wished I'd have, of course, I wasn't saved, so I didn't have it. Now, I think none of you students need to hear this because you're all Christians and all that. But um, I don't know, some of you maybe heard me tell it, but when I was going to Rhema, uh, we had one of our classes was uh, where we had to do adverbs. And what, was, what was the name of that class? Anyway, we had to do all that. And I'm driving home from Rama, and I says, I wish I'd have paid attention in school. <laughs> and I no more got that out of my mouth than I heard it. It was all, to me, it was like an audible voice. I, it was like, I wish you had of two. <laughs> so, so kids, don't, don't lollygong. Don't let your mind get just disconnected. Get everything you can because you don't know what God has. You know, I had one idea of what I was going to be, and God had the other idea. And that's why he was saying, you know, if you, I wish you'd have paid attention too. So pay attention. Pay attention. Glory to God. So anyway, are you here today? So the word sharp, the ability to understand. Don't, you get in something and, and it kind of is difficult, don't say, I don't understand. In Christ, I understand. In Christ, I have the ability to understand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Put a draw on that in Him. The Bible says that that our faith is energized by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in us in Christ. So in Christ is that wisdom. In Christ is that, uh, uh, that quick, sharp, and smart. In Christ. And so when we acknowledge those things, we put a draw on those things. Because they're in us, in us, in us, in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The word uh, sharp means uh, 
ability to understand, easy to, to perceive. Easy to perceive. Glory be to God. I'm saying, helping you students, what I'm saying for you, if you'll get a hold uh, of some of those things like that, uh, the Lord will make it easy for you in school. He don't want it to be hard, does He? Now, you can't slough off. You know, Miss Pat Harrison... She was going to school at Rama, pastor in a church. I believe they were pastoring at the time. And uh, she had a test come up, and she didn't study. Everybody say she didn't study. So when it come time to take the test, and she's taking the test, and got the, the uh, an area she didn't understand, she said, thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me. And he said, I can't help you because you didn't prepare. So always be prepared. Don't say, well, I can, pastor says, I can just confess. I'm quick, sharp, and smart and don't have to do anything. I'm not, I can't preach the whole Bible in one session. So I can't tell you. Oh, yeah. For me to remember. The word sharp means brilliant. Beyond the natural. Students, I'm telling you, in Christ, you are not a mere person. You're a new creature. You're a supernatural being. And so, so you can reach beyond the natural in your inability in Him. The word smart, smart, mentally quick. Glory to God. Mentally quick. Glory to God. He'll quicken your mind. In Christ. In Christ. Mentally quick. Clever. Clever. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6. 17. Yeah, you can put it up there in the King James. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You don't have two spirits in you. You're, he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. His intelligence, his quickness and, and understanding is yours in him, in Christ Jesus. You understand that? We want to get that glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Be in Christ. Let me, run, let me see. That's about when you, when you when it says be in, if any man be in Christ it's talking about in union in union with Christ the ha we have that union with Christ and he that's in union with Christ is one spirit and uh, we can put we can put a draw on that amen hallelujah let's go to uh, Philemon Philemon, the sixth verse. <clears throat> Let's look at this a little bit here. 
Paul said that the communication of thy faith may become. May become effectual. Do you know you can have dormant faith? Or you can have... Uh, And, and so Paul is talking here to Philemon, and he's saying that the communication of thy faith, notice the word communication. The definition, let me give you a definition of communication. Transmitting a verbal or written message. A verbal or written. Well, in this case, it would be verbal. If I wanted to communicate with Pastor Darlene, I'd have to just shake my head. No, I'd have to say something. Amen. So let's say that the confession, could we use that? Of thy faith may become effectual. Now, the word effectual, one definition that I like is divinely energized. Or the ability to produce results. Are you here today? So, so look at this. That the, that the confession of thy faith may become divinely energized, divinely energized, divinely energized. You, you have to have your faith divinely energized for results. Years ago, uh, Pastor Darlene had a growth in her body. And uh, her faith was dormant in that area because she didn't know. Are you here? She went to the doctor and uh, about and they you know they wanted to do surgery. And you said, no, let's wait. Well, then once she knew she could begin to use her faith to dominate. Up until then, it was dormant because she didn't know. So you cannot, you can't even act on faith without knowledge. Okay? So she went another, went another year or two years, or a couple of years and went back, and they uh, said, well, it hadn't grown. Okay. Up to, and they, every time you went, it wasn't getting bigger. It wasn't getting smaller. But faith was dominating. Because she was confessing. She was confessing the good thing in her in Christ. She went back after two years or so, and it was gone. But she had to dominate her dormant faith. She had to use her faith, which was dormant, to dominate the situation. Are you here today? That the confession of your faith may become effectual by. That word by there is very important. It's a very important word because it's going to tell how. It's going to tell how his faith was able to dominate. How? By acknowledging. By acknowledging. And here he's saying, the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I remember when we were, uh, I don't know if, 
had gone to Rhema yet or not. But there was a lot of, of teaching on confession. And some, it went so far as to say, confessing everything. But it doesn't say everything. It says confessing every good thing. So there's some things we shouldn't confess because... Oh, that's good. If a good confession will energize your faith, what will a bad confession? It'll de-energize. <laughs> I don't know what the word is for that, you know. It'll devalue your faith. Only thing that will energize faith for results is a good confession. Conf acknowledge, act, act, knowledge, acknowledging every good thing in you in Christ. Listen to this, young people and everybody else. God has put in you in Christ. God has put in you in Christ every good thing you need to be victorious. Already supplied. Are you here today? Glory to God. That the communication... You know, I... Uh, uh, few years ago um, had a sty in this eye and sometimes it'd get kind of big or something I'd be ministering and I could see it and uh, you know I just kind of let it be there I walked into church one day in the, to, for the service and, and one of our head ushers says, why don't you go to the doctor and have that burned off? And uh, so I turned and coming down the hallway here and I was thinking, yeah, I could just go to the doctor and have that burned off. But I heard, not an audible voice, I heard an impression, why don't you speak to it? See, in a sense, my faith was dormant. And, I, and so I, I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, you know, I preach confession all that. <laughs> why don't you, you know, it's like the way it was said. It was, why don't you speak to it? You know what I mean? You know? And, I, you know, and, I, and I thought about that. I thought it wasn't a, something that was critical. You know, I'm, I wouldn't tell everybody, you know, just speak to something. I mean, if you've got certain things in your body that maybe, you know, you need to do it the right way. But this was no danger. Something for me to kind of work on, work, work on, you know, I guess. You know, to, why don't you? So I went home and I did. I, start, I said, that which is not planted of God is plucked up and dissolved in the name of Jesus. Was that a good thing? Well, yeah, that's a good thing in Christ. And so I just started speaking. That was not planned of God. It's plucked up and dissolved, you know. I cursed that thing, you know, and all that. Well, I just went on about life. I, I don't know how, uh, how many months it was or so, and I'm downstairs doing something. I looked in the mirror, and it was going. Why? Because I released my dormant faith to become dominant. Are you here today? Now, I, 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 I don't do this. Some of you have heard me share this in the service. This is Lester Summerall's son was ministering in Louisiana, I believe. And he, a guy come up, he said, what, what do you need? And he said, I, need, I want these warts. I want to get rid of these warts. And he said, well, just curse them. And he said, damp warts? <laughs> well, he's, I think he didn't understand. 
the difference between curse and cuss, you know. So he, he cursed them by cussing them. Now, I don't know the end results, but I'm pretty sure they probably left. <laughs> but anyway, well, that didn't do too good here today. <laughs> so, that the communication of thy faith may become dominant. That the communication of your faith may become dominant. God has given you the measure of faith and it's up to you to make it dominant. How? By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And for you students, I'm quick, sharp, and smart. I am quick. I'm sharp and smart in Christ. What are you doing? You're making your faith dominant or, or ability to have results by saying it. Get up every morning before you go to school and say, I'm quick, sharp, and smart in Christ. That will, because you are. Did you know that? Because you are quick, sharp, and smart in Christ. You are quick. You are sharp. You are smart in Christ. But there's a lot of things we are in Christ that we don't enjoy because we don't know it and we don't acknowledge it. <clears throat> Glory. Glory to God. Your faith won't work unless you acknowledge or confess good things. You can't confess negative and receive positive. You can't do it. Faith works in line. Faith, God kind of faith, works in line with good things. God's, the God kind of faith is drawn to good things, and good things are drawn to the God kind of faith. Amen. God puts in you all that is necessary for you to be victorious in life. Second Peter chapter 1. It's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. The terms in Christ, in Him, in whom, refer to who you are in union with Christ. Who you are, what you have, and what you can do. Glory to God. Who you are. You are every day, I'm a new creature in Christ. That would keep the reality of it. I am a new creature in Christ. I am a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is this all right? Amen. Glory to God. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Turn over there. And we'll look at some things here. But have him are you in Christ Jesus. Everybody say in Christ Jesus. Who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So uh, the wisdom he's made means we don't have to go through life with natural wisdom. We go through life with supernatural wisdom because Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. Righteousness. The same right standing with God that Jesus has. Is Jesus right with God? Then he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. So that means if, if Jesus is right with God, you and I are right with God. That's the good thing we have in us, in Him. 
We have so much good stuff in us. Glory to God. Can, that's why, I mean, my God, if we got a hold of it and we and we try to think, well, I don't have nothing to say, get in the Word and you'll find plenty to say because it's full of good stuff for us to be able to confess the good thing. The good thing in you is you have the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God in you because you're in Jesus. And you have right standing with God because you're in Jesus. He's been made unto us sanctification. Separation from the world. Romans says 6.12 Sin has no dominion over us for we're not under the law but under grace. We don't have to sin in Jesus. Separated from the world. You and I are separated from the world in Christ. That's a good thing. It's a good thing, Dan. Glory to God. And redemption. Deliverance and freedom. Deliverance and freedom. There was a guy asking the Lord to do something for him. And uh, I don't know, remember for sure what it was, but it had to be with deliverance. And, and he said, Lord, I need, I need you. I need deliverance. And the Lord says, don't you know that's just how he said it. I, I remember writing it down. Don't you know I delivered you from all on the cross? Don't you know? And a lot of us would have to bat our eyes too. Don't you know? See, that's why, how many times, I mean, I, my God, I just... All the prayers I prayed the first year or so I was born again. Oh, wow. That's, do you know most people are asking God for something that they already have in Christ? Romans 5, 17. Katie, what time do you have to leave? No. Huh? They called her in early. Would have been. Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. That's a good thing in you in Christ. You are capable of reigning as a king in life in Christ. Say this, I rule and I reign as a king in life by Christ Jesus. Say, I rule and I reign in life as a king. Before you leave her, Katie, but on your way out, come by up here. I'm going to lay hands on you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Notice the good thing that's in you in Christ is your ability to reign as a king in life. Amen. Do you see that today? 
What did you do to earn the right to reign as a king? You made Jesus your Lord. When the minute you made Jesus your Lord, you, be, you had the ability to reign as a king in life by Jesus. Glory. Glory to God. Are you here today? Are you glad you're in Christ? You know, it's like somebody asked Charles Capps, what do you think about once saved, always saved? He said, I don't want out. I don't think about not being saved. I don't think about not being in Christ. I'm enjoying a, such a good life in Him, why would I not want to be in Him? Ephesians 1, 3. Is this all right? You know, just refreshers. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who has blessed us, who has blessed us, who has blessed us. See, a lot of people don't even know they're blessed. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. So you confess that. It'll, do, it'll cause your faith to dominate by acknowledging good things that's in you in Christ. Here's one of the good things that's in you. One of the good things in you in Christ is He's blessed you with all. <clears throat> you want to know something? God has already made provision for you. How many, oh my God, how many times did I, when the first year I'd say, be crying? Oh God, oh God. He's already made provision for you. But you have to use your faith to dominate the situation to get the provision. Glory to God. God has already made provision in Christ. My one translation I have, I believe I got it in here. Norley, Norley Bible. Blessed, blessed us with ev every spiritual blessing that heaven itself enjoys. That's all right. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, don't. Just get off. Just get off. Father, in Jesus' name, I just release that anointing to excel. The year to, oh, the year of excellence through excelling. Thank you, Lord, for that anointing upon that impartation. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. Amen. That impartation, amen. amen. Yeah, say I'm quick, sharp, and smart in Christ. Good. Love you. Love you. See you. Glory. Romans chapter 8, verse 37.
Are you here today? Are you glad you're in, in Christ? I was looking at this. This is pretty all right. who grants us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms where we live in the anointing. Not because of anything we have done, but because of what He has done for us. For what He has done for us. Paul, do you see that? For what? It's not what we did, it's what He did for us. This God that measured the oceans out in His hands did this for us. Why? Because He loves us. But because of what He has done for us. Think about that. You know, if any man be in Christ. I'm so glad that I'm in Christ. We could get excited and shout. Thank you, Jesus. What did we do? What did we do to inherit every good thing? We made Jesus our Lord. You didn't do anything else, did you, Rebecca? You didn't do anything else, did you, Jane? But because of what he's done for us. And what he's done for us is in Christ. So when we get in Christ, we get in all He's done for us. Donald, did you ask if you could take a picture of that? <laughs> I was just teasing. <laughs> I was teasing. I was teasing. I can tease Donald. He'll still make dessert for me. <laughs> um, is this good? What we have in Him. Acts 17, 28. In Him we live and move and have our being. Brother Hagin says in his book, What a vast storehouse of power in Jesus' name. In Him we live. And move and have our being in Him. But think about that that the communication of your faith may become dominant by the acknowledging of every good thing. It don't, it don't, uh, you know, it don't, it, every good thing is in here. But if we don't, Acknowledge. Communication, our faith become divinely energized by acknowledging. You're not going to get around confession. 
any way you look at it, you're not going to get around it. Well, I'm just not into that confession stuff. Well, then you're not in all that good stuff that he has for you in Christ. If I mean, my goodness, just go ahead and confess it. Hallelujah. Are you here today? Um, Philippians 4.13. Glory to God. I can do all things. I can do all things. How? Through Christ. You can't get, you, well, I, I'm not, I'm, 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 help me out, Mr. Dan. <laughs> I'm going to do it myself. No, you're not. No, you're not. It's through, through, through Christ. You got the strength for all of it. Put it up there in the Amplified Bible. I have strength for all things. Period. Is that right? It's not, Julie. It's in Christ. It's in Christ. That's what God wants us to get a hold of. Everything He's blessed us with in Christ. Who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Look at that. He didn't say he was self-sufficient. He said he was self-sufficient in Jesus' sufficiency. That's what makes him self-sufficient. He, we are self-sufficient, but it's in his sufficiency. Glory to God. God put all this in Jesus. Now, that some, sounds like somebody that's smart. Who would think of all that stuff like that? God. And he put it in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Any man be in Christ. He's a new creature with new features. Thank you, Jesus. We'll get through this. We'll get through this here. Romans 8 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Say it. Say it. Complete it through Him. him. You know, there, there might be other places in the Bible... But here, what Jesus did, we're more than. He conquered, and we didn't do nothing, so we're more than conquerors.
you probably heard me tell the story about uh, 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 not Evander Hallerfield, but who was uh, no Tyson, Mike Tyson. He fought. He beat. He won. He got the money. He conquered. He went home. His wife said, give me the money. She's more than a conqueror. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, that's what he said, uh, that, that be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. I've deprived it of having an effect on you. I've deprived it. He didn't, he, Jesus wasn't like, now don't get me wrong, he wasn't more than a conqueror. He conquered everything, which is right. But we are more than. Why? Because we didn't do nothing but get ourselves in Christ. And that's why Paul was saying, nay. He, he was saying, there's quoting an Old Testament song. We're, we're like sheep led to the slaughter. And, and Paul said, nay. Don't you try to put that on me. I'm more than a conqueror through. do a commercial if you don't have this book you ought to get it because they do some things for you in here they put the scriptures it has to do in him in Christ in the anointed in the beloved in whom, by whom, by his blood, by himself. I mean, this will keep you busy. That's the advertisement. <laughs> commercial. The commercial. But, but again, you might not feel like a, more, that you're more than a conqueror. Just go ahead and acknowledge it. And acknowledge it will cause an under, a, 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 a awareness. That's what... That's what Paul's telling Philemon, if you'll take your faith and acknowledge the good things, you'll energize your faith. You'll cause your faith to dominate. Thank you, Jesus. When's the chicken here? Is it ready? Huh? Yeah, that's all right. I don't want to miss out on the chicken. Mark out there, he might load his van up. <laughs> no, Mark wouldn't do that. Anything and everything that's good is in you in Christ Jesus. The more you acknowledge the good things that are in you in Christ, the more you will become aware of the good things that are in you in Christ. It 
2 Corinthians 2.14. New Life Bible says, makes us win in everything. Makes us win in everything in Christ. Say this, thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph in Christ. You know, when you get up in the morning, you know, you we had a lady used to come to our church. She says, we need a big Rolodex. You have us confessing so much, we need to just flip the Rolodex, you know. <laughs> I mean, I tell you what to say in the morning. Somebody else tells you what to say in the morning. Miss Jeanette will tell you what to say in the morning and others. You get up in the morning and you say, well, how am I going to get to work before noon? I'm going to be. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I, you know, you start to go out the door. Oops, I forgot to confess that. I better go back in and confess. <laughs> in the mornings, you ought to get up and look in the mirror. You know, look at yourself in the mirror and say, thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph in Christ. Now I'm going to go out and dominate. Amen. Because what have you done? You may, have do you may have activated your faith. Your faith might have been dormant. You might have been thinking, oh my God, it's going to be terrible today. The devil might put something in there, oh, something's going to happen to you that's day today that's bad. Well, what do you got to do? If you don't do something, it can affect your faith. So you get to look in the mirror and say, thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph today in Christ. What have you done? You've activated and made your faith dominant. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is good. Glory to God. From dormant, from dormant to dominant. Can you look up that word dormant? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Inactive. Whew. Only active faith works. Brother Hagin says this, faith gives action to the power. So, if it says He uh, causes us to triumph in Christ, He causes us to triumph in Christ. When we say triumph in Christ, that, if it's faith confession, will activate that power. Inactive. Keep. That's... I don't remember who it was who said, keep the switch of faith turned on. Keep the switch. That's really good. What was it? Uh, oh, that, that evangelist. You don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. Pardon? Yeah. 
and uh, R.W. Shambach. You know, there was that, that they would say that you don't need. There was a guy laying in a hospital somewhere in Wisconsin, somewhere about to die, wasn't even saved. And the Lord spoke to him and says, you don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. And he somehow told him, get me a Bible. And uh, through that, he got born again and then got healed. You don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. Have faith in God. Say that. I have faith. Faith in God. Oh yeah, well, we'll do it. We'll get it. We'll get it done today sometime. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that's it. I believe that's all I got. Don't let your faith get dormant. Keep it dominant. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. I know what I want to do. You know, I was, um, this morning, it just kind of come to me. Do you want to raise? Do you want to raise? I mean, it wasn't like, I don't know me. Then raise your giving. Isn't that good? Here, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you measure, it shall be measured to you again. So if we'll elevate our, our giving, we'll elevate our receiving. If you need a sevelope, uh, put that up there about T.F. Triumphant Faith Center. Those that are in school between kindergarten or whatever it is, preschool to senior. Okay? Come down here if you want hands laid on you. You, please. Come down here. This way. Come down here. And just stand in line. Come on up here. Glory to God. Uh, what was it again? Excellent. Glory to God. Glory to God. Excellent year. Release the anointing for an excellent year to excel in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Excellent. Shondoto balakika makashandatai. Mondoto briasta shendele mukoba. Excellent, excellent year. We set that in motion. Yes. The anointing yes. for an excellent year. Excellent year to excel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We release that anointing for yes. an excellent year to excel. Yes. Oh Jesus my! Name. In Jesus' name. Excellent year to excel in Jesus name we release the anointing we set it in motion a 
That's a good thing. Yes. Seeing her in Christ Amen. is an excellent year. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent year is a good thing in Christ for you. We release that anointing. Excellent year to excel in Jesus' name. Excellent year to excel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. You want to excel? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Excellent. Excellent year to excel in Christ. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. To Shundo, Shundo, you want to excel? Yeah, glory. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the anointing to excel. Excellence in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Excel. Excel. You want to excel? Yeah, glory. Receive that anointing, that impartation in the name of Jesus to excel in excellence in Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory. You want to excel? Glory to God. Mandeshki be afono ma paliste shandele tokobata. Excellent. Year we declare an excellent year, lay hands on him. A year to excel in Christ. And we pray and declare this in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Excel. In Christ, in Jesus' name, to excel, to excel. Oh, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those... In any tech school or whatever, beyond, I mean, they're beyond the senior class, or teachers, Josh, you taking training? Pardon? What did you say? Not at a tech school. Well, I know it, but you're taking training. Yeah. 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 It's all right. saw Paul coming down here with you. I thought, oh, he's going back. <laughs> no. I watched him in Sunday school. Maybe, maybe I'll get him this Sunday school. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Yes. Excel. Yes. Excel yes. in Christ. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory. You teach him?
Excel. Oh, we impart that. Everything, we acknowledge the good things that's in her in Christ. And we declare that this will be a year she will excel in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Excel. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's wonderful. Glory to God. Oh, excel. Excel in the name of Jesus. Excellence. Impartations, those, to make this year a great year in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Excel. We need that anointing to excel. To excel, Lord, that word to excel in the name of Jesus. To excel, the good thing that's in her in Christ is excellence in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive, sister? Yes. <laughs> Jesus, excel. The anointing to excel. Excellence. The roadblocks to be removed in Jesus' name. Removed. Jesus' name. Praise Thank God. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Excellence. Excellence in the name of Jesus. We release that anointing. Excellence. Excellent. Excellent. That was it? Yes, that was the word. Excellent. An excellent word. And Excel, that's yes, right. Yes. Excellent yes. to excel. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Glory. Yes. Quick. Sharp and smart. Sharp and smart. In Christ. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A year to excel. Okay, praise God. Say this, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Paul said, I'm ready for anything and equal to anything in Him who infuses inner strength in me. I am self-sufficient in His sufficiency. Glory to God.